What's up y'all, it's your boy Tobias and today we are actually going to do something that's pretty simplistic but for some reason it seems like something that people have difficulty with and that is coleslaw people. Yes, today I'm going to show y'all how I make my coleslaw which is extremely simple and honestly I think that's the reason why a lot of people mess it up because they try to do too much and it doesn't really require all of that. Not to mention one of the reasons why I did not like coleslaw growing up is because to me, coleslaw, or I should say bad coleslaw, is like drinking mayonnaise. You know what I mean? Like the coleslaw that just got too much mayonnaise. It's like swimming in a mayonnaise river and I can't stand it. So that is, I think, probably one of the biggest reasons why I was never a fan of coleslaw until I started to make mine my own. Now mine isn't dry, but it's also not very soupy and that's the way I like it. I like a coleslaw that's very multi-purpose, whether you can eat it on the side as a side dish or put it on top of a pulled pork sub or a pulled pork sandwich or a pulled chicken sandwich or put it on top of anything. You don't want it too loose. So let's get over to this kitchen. Let's get to cooking so I can show y'all how to make some simple but bomb coleslaw. Whipping up all of your favorite recipes. Simply food. You should know by now that you're in for a treat. Simply food. There's no other channel where you'd rather be. Simply food. Seafood, pasta, cakes, and pies. Sing and laugh and even cry. Like, like and share and hit subscribe. Simply food by T.Y. Alrighty y'all, so let's go on ahead and run down these ingredients. So what I have here is about a medium sized head of green cabbage. And then I have, a, I would say this was roughly on the smaller size of the purple cabbage. We're not gonna need too much of that. So you really don't have to waste your time getting a large one. I have roughly about a cup to a cup and a half of baby carrots. One organic lemon, it doesn't have to be organic, it can be whatever you find. A small sweet Vidalia onion, you can get the smallest one you can find because you're only gonna need about four tablespoons worth. And then the king of mayonnaise, Duke's mayonnaise. Please do not use Miracle Whip. I'm also gonna be using some apple cider vinegar. And then for the seasonings, we're gonna be throwing in some celery seed, which will give great flavor. Of course, your black pepper. And then one ingredient that I feel sets mine apart is the Spike Original Seasoning Blend. That's truly gonna make a big difference here. And we're gonna use some milk as well as some sugar. Now let's go on ahead and start breaking down this cabbage. Now I wanna talk to you guys about different ways that you could break this cabbage down depending on how you plan on serving your coleslaw. If this is a coleslaw you're making for the purpose of topping it on top of barbecue sandwiches, meaning pulled pork sandwiches, pulled chicken sandwiches, you know, even if you want it on top of your hot dogs, chili dogs, then I would go on ahead and follow the way I'm slicing it in this video, which is vertically thin slices, okay? If you are gonna be serving it solely as nothing but a side dish, then break it down into much, much smaller pieces. You could even run it through your food processor so that it's nice and tiny. That way you won't have that much of a crunch and it won't be competing with anything else. The reason why I'm slicing it in these vertical, you know, very thin slivers is because when I know that I'm gonna be serving this with barbecue pork, uh, barbecue sandwiches, I like to make sure that there's a texture difference. So I like the extra crunch here. So you want it to be nicely thin. You could also use a cheese grater if you want to shred it. That's completely fine. The same thing applies with your purple cabbage. I'm only going to use roughly, I would say, I'm going to use one full half and then maybe a quarter of the other half. You don't really need that much. I really truly only use this for the purpose of color, uh, but it does also give, um, you know, great flavor as well. And speaking of the purpose of using it for color, what I like to do is add it to the coleslaw to the green cabbage mixture and then go on ahead and just give it a dry mix that way you can really see what the coloring is going to look like and then you can decide if you need to add in any more once that's starting to look the way you want it to then that's when we can go on ahead and start moving 
on to the rest of the recipe. And you can go on ahead and sit that to the side and start soaking that in cold water for 30 minutes. You want that to soak for 30 minutes in cold water. Now we're gonna move on to the carrots. Now the carrots are gonna add some, you know, natural sweetness to it and also great color. So like I said, that was roughly about a cup to a cup and a half of baby carrots. Um, and I'm putting it in my food processor because I want it nice and small. But I'm gonna do this in two parts. I'm gonna break this down by itself first. And I'm gonna show you guys in a few seconds roughly about what size that should be. Because when we add the onion in, we're gonna pulse it again and we don't want it to turn into liquid form. So you don't wanna go too far on the first round. The first round is simply just to make sure that you're breaking it up. And as you can see here, you know, there's still nice whole pieces. It's not turned into water or to mush. That's the perfect size. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to take the onion, which is an optional ingredient. This is going to give a little bit of a kick to your coleslaw. People are going to be like, oh, well, what's that spice that I'm tasting? It's the onion. You can use that whole small sweet onion or half of it or none of it at all. It's completely up to you. But now that we've pulverized that down, now you guys can see what the actual sizing is and that's exactly where you want it no more than that you don't want it to be liquid you still want it to have some sort of shape now we're not going to use all of that so go on ahead and just put it in a bowl like i have here on the screen and then you're going to set that to the side until we're ready now, like I said, I like to let my cabbage soak for at least 30 to 45 minutes in cold water. After it's soaked, I make sure that I rinse it off twice and then let it completely drain for an additional 15 to 20 minutes. You want to make sure that as much of that excess water can drain off because cabbage holds on and retains a lot of water. And I'll explain more about that a little bit later on. Let's talk about the dressing. Now, like I said, I don't like no runny, super, super soupy cabbage. So I'm only going to be working with a cup and a half of Duke's mayonnaise. Now, once again, I would not suggest using Miracle Whip. And if you are hell bent on using Miracle Whip, then just do not add in any additional sugar because it's going to be way too much. Um, so I use Duke's. I also have here a half a tablespoon of celery seed. I'm going in with two full tablespoons of the spike seasoning, okay? Two full tablespoons of the spike seasoning. We're gonna add in black pepper to taste. Remember, you can always add in salt and pepper later on down the line. Don't go too overboard. I'm gonna add in one and a half tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. Once again, that's one and a half tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. And then I'm adding in one cup of whole milk. If you would like to use buttermilk, you absolutely can. But if you do, I would not bother with adding in any additional lemon juice. I'm only gonna use half of the lemon. Um, if you want to add in more of the lemon, I would suggest waiting until the next day, right before you serve it, taste it first, and then see if you would like to add in any additional lemon. I'm going to add in two and a half tablespoons of sugar. Once again, this is around the time now, after you get this nice and whisked and nice and smooth, this is when you're going to go in and start tasting your dressing because this is where all the magic is happening. Once you get that mastered, then you can start adding in your cabbage, but before you add in your cabbage, we're going to go on ahead and add in um, that carrot mixture here. And once again, like I said, that carrot mixture is going to add in some fantastic coloring. But this is the perfect time for you to taste it, see if you need anything. And as you can see here up close on the screen, I mean, you can see the specks of all that flavoring. And a lot of that comes from that spike seasoning, which is the reason why I love using it. Now, let's talk about the carrot mixture. So like I said, I ended up not using all of that. Um, I probably only use, I would say, maybe about one cup. You know, maybe a little less than one cup. That really will depend on what you like. But don't feel like you have to use all of it because once again, it does have the onion in it and you don't want it to be too onion heavy. This is more so just to add in that little bit of kick and the carrot is there to give the natural sweetness but also that beautiful orange color. Now that we got that ready, I like to add in my cabbage mixture little by little. That way I can mix it in and then I can really see if I need to add in any more cabbage or if it's already perfect where it 
it is. Once again, you do not want it to be too loose, but you also don't want it to be too dry. And by too dry, I mean you could add in way too much cabbage and then it's just going to soak it all up and it'll be a complete mess. If you don't add in enough cabbage, well then clearly you're going to end up with more dressing. Now, the key to coleslaw is to always make sure that you're serving it the next day. I would never suggest serving uh, coleslaw on the same day that you make it. There's just no way for that coleslaw to get soft enough nor soak up all of that dressing in time. Not unless you're letting it sit for like eight hours. So that's just that's just me personally. Um, so I let mine sit in the fridge overnight. And what you're going to notice is when I go to the next screen, you're going to see a complete difference in the texture of this coleslaw. Right now, it's looking, you know, pretty thick. It almost might look a bit dry, but trust me when I say cabbage retains a lot of water. And by us adding in the spike and any additional sea salt or kosher salt, please do not use table salt. It'll be way too salty. But by adding in additional salt, it's going to extract all of that water and you're going to end up with a much looser cabbage. So you can see how it looks now. This is the day of. Nice and thick, beautiful, looks absolutely stunning. We're going to put the lid on this, put it in the fridge for 24 hours. When you take it out the next day it is going to be completely different and look at that it's completely thinned out it soaked up all of that dressing it looks absolutely delicious it's not too soupy it's the perfect amount to top on top of uh, barbecue pork sandwiches or any type of barbecue sandwiches look i hope you guys try out this recipe i hope you've enjoyed this video if you're new to my channel welcome to my channel i hope you highly consider subscribing to my channel hit that bell to be notified and as always y'all baby stay cute and take care. Bye, y'all. I hope y'all enjoy.